Uh, hi everyone, uh, I'm Le Chuan Li uh, from Yaw Lab of Rice University. And today I'm going to present our work joint embedding of biological networks for cross species functional alignment. Uh, this work introduced a new way to reveal functional relationship between genes across uh, species, uh, especially between human and different model organisms. So model organisms are very important for studying human diseases and pathways, but there is a gap between human and model organism biology. Uh, for example, uh, if we want to study a specific gene for disease using mouse as a model, how can we know uh, what is the gene of interest in the mouse? And also the problem uh, like happens the other way around. If we already find something interest uh, in mouse, how can we bring this knowledge, knowledge back to human? Um, so we need to find a way to achieve those information transfer uh, across different species, especially between human and model organisms. So people previously often use autologous genes uh, as those links between different species. Uh, the autologous genes are the same gene in different species that uh, diverged because of the speciation event. And there are two main uh, problems with that. The first is uh, there are only, uh, only limited number of genes that have the autologous genes. And the other is uh, because currently people generally determine the autologous genes uh, using sequence similarity. So the sequence similarity cannot always guarantee the functional similarity. So people are trying to incorporate other kind of information to better uh, infer the functional relationship between genes. Uh, one thing they use is uh, protein formation. Uh, protein work together in organisms to carry out the function roles. So proteins that are physically connected with each other are tend to have similar or same functions. And people construct those protein-protein interaction network based on whether, they, whether proteins physically connect with, with each other. And if we have two a protein protein interaction network for two species, we can analyze the network topology uh, in the PPI network. And based on those network topologies, we can help infer the functional relationships. And we still also want to use the uh, also log information, the sequence information I introduced before. So combining those two, uh, which is uh, what's current existing approaches, global alignment approaches uses. They generally linearly combine the network topology and sequence information. Uh, what I mean by that is they had a hyperparameter uh, which uh, governs the trade-off between network topology and sequence information. And from the uh, example on the right, we can see that sometimes the network topology information and the sequence information uh, pit against each other. So this indicates there is a more complex relationship between them uh, other than a linear relationship. So more recent approach use uh, general purpose embedding to help uh, overcome those, uh, to help capture the complex nonlinear relationship between network topologies and sequence similarity. And for uh, more detail about this approach is that uh, the, for two PPI network, they first generate uh, embeddings for each of the network. And using the uh, autologous genes as uh, anchor, as anchor links between two network, which are the a yellow star in the graph, um, we can project one embedding to another. So we cre create a joint embedding that contains the relationship between and within different species. And one method using this kind of approach is Monk. Uh, and there are two shortcomings with this approach. The first is, uh, so Monk's embedding dimension is the size of the PPI network. Uh, for biological networks, it's usually in a scale of thousand of, or 10,000. So this is very inconvenient for downstream analysis. And also from the example, we can see, the so alignment is it's directional, which means if we align human to mouse, or from mouse to human, it will create two alignment, which is also annoying for downstream analysis. So our goal is to uh, propose 
a new method for aligning, uh, for inferring functional relationship between different species. And we also want to achieve uh, to handle the sparsity of biological networks and also to handle the non-linear relationship between topology informations and sequence information. And we want the uh, embedding to be bi-directional and also the embedding size should be customizable. So we, we propose here the embedding to network alignment, we call it Edna, uh, which mainly contains three steps. Uh, the first, in the first step, we use an autoencoder to create uh, embedding for individual PPIs. So in the second step, uh, we use a cross-training method inspired by natural language processing area. Uh, and we, instead of project uh, one embedding to another, uh, we cross-training uh, two autoencoders and create a joint embedding. Uh, and with that joint embedding, it contains both uh, within and cross-species functional similarities so that we can perform downstream analysis. And I will go into more detail about our method. Uh, in the first step is uh, individual network alignment. So given a uh, network, the most straightforward way is to use uh, a row of adjacency matrix as input uh, for the model. But there is a problem with that is the uh, row of uh, adjacency matrix only contain information about direct neighbors and two hop neighbors. Um, but in biological uh, like cases, the like long range neighbors are sometimes very important because uh, biological pathways can easily uh, contain a chain of genes that's like greater than a uh, number of three. So we use uh, a deep walk approximation matrix uh, as our uh, input. And for this matrix uh, is denoted by the matrix M here. And you can see from the formula, it can be understand uh, as a weighted sum a bit, a bit, a bit the sum for number of uh, passes uh, smaller or equal to uh, like a hyperparameter t here. So for each entry, it's this weighted the sum uh, of a number of uh, passes instead of direct, uh, whether those two nodes has uh, uh, directly connected or not, so that we can have a global uh, long-range information in our input. And then we, food, uh, we fit this NetF M matrix into an autoencoder. And there are two parts of the loss functions. The first is uh, traditional reconstruction loss to uh, help uh, capture the global information in the matrix. And we also want to emphasize the local structure, which are the physically interacted uh, nodes should have similar embeddings. So we use another loss to enforce that. Uh, combining those loss together with some regularization parameters will be our uh, loss for, uh, for the embedding process. And the second process, uh, the second step of our method is uh, cross-species network, network alignment. Uh, as I said before, uh, we take the inspiration from uh, natural language processing area especially language translation. Uh, in, uh, from that, we can consider individual proteins uh, as words and uh, autologous genes as words with similar uh, meanings. Uh, with that, uh, we can assume that the autologous genes in the joint embedding should have uh, similar embeddings because they, are, they should be similar. So, uh, given uh, also uh, autologous pair, uh, for example, from human and mouse, we first take the human encoder, uh, taking uses the human encoder to take the uh, human also lock as input and generates the embedding for the human also lock. Since the human also lock should have the similar embedding with mouse also lock, so we use the decoder of uh, mouse. Uh, uh, use the decoder of mouse taking human also logs embedding and we're trying to try to recreate the mouse uh, also logs topology. And it also have the other way around. Combining those two directions, it will uh, form our loss function for the uh, cross network alignment process. 
And by iterating the individual network embedding and the cross-network alignment step several times, uh, it will finally create our final joint embedding uh, that cr uh, contains both within species and cross species functional similarity. Uh, and we will be using the cosine similarity for uh, each pairs, uh, each pair of genes cross different species uh, to calculate the cosine similarity with them. Uh, and this our, uh, that is our prediction for how functional similar uh, those two genes are. And next, I will introduce uh, our evaluation. Uh, first, as I said, uh, we need to uh, see how our predicted functional similarity uh, correlates uh, with the uh, uh, functional similarities that are uh, like ex uh, with the existing knowledge of functional similarity. And for the gold standard, we use uh, gene ontology, which is a unified gene attribute across different species. Um, and since the uh, gene ontology uh, terms and uh, different genes have a many-to-many -many mapping from the example on the right, uh, so we use the Jacquard index, which is uh, index divided by the union to uh, quantify how similar two genes are. So a higher Jacquard index uh, means uh, implies a higher functional similarity between two genes. So what we did is uh, we take the top 5,000 uh, predictions by our model and with three uh, other existing models and other two baselines. And we see uh, what are the Jacquard index for those uh, top uh, 5,000 predictions uh, between different models. And this is aligning human to yeast. And we can see our uh, model outperform all three existing models and two baselines. And this trend still holds of when we're aligning human to mouse, uh, human to fruit fly, and human to worm. And in the second evaluation, we will use our joint embedding as an input to a, a supervised model to infer more complicated uh, gene relationships. And in here, we use genetic interaction and a more a severe case of genetic interaction, synthetic lethality, which is defined by when we perturb two genes, uh, it will cause a deleterious effect on the organism that we perturb either of the genes uh, won't, uh, won't have. So when we have a gene pair, uh, we will use a supervised model to uh, use the uh, uh, embedding created by our model Aetna and use another uh, supervised algorithm to uh, classify wh whether uh, this pair is synthetic lethal or not. So when we have a pair, we will get the embedding and we combine them by adding them up and we feed them into a kernel support vector machine and then it will output whether it's synthetic lethal or not. So here we are using the information from uh, the synthetic lethal information from two kinds of yeast, the Savisi and Pombi, uh, and we are comparing with the existing method Monk because that is the only method uh, also have a joint embedding. Uh, the others are uh, only outperform a similarity score instead of embedding. In the first task, uh, we are trying to see whether using the embedding generated only from PPI and uh, sequence also logs, uh, can we, uh, and using the uh, like synthetic lethal information as label, or uh, can we infer, uh, have a good prediction of the synthetic lethal informations? And we are using the joint embedding created from uh, Servici and Pombi to infer, uh, and, and also the synthetic lethal information from both Servici and Pombi to infer one kind of uh, east. And we can see our model outperforms the existing monk. And in the next task, we are uh, like trying to uh, tackle the more harder challenge, which is using the synthetic lethal information from only one kind of yeast and to predict that in, in another kind of yeast, which is achieving the functional information transfer that we are trying to achieve. And we can see our model still have a reasonable performance. Uh, and it's also still better than the existing method monk. 
Uh, finally, what we uh, did is that uh, we are trying to see whether in the uh, like a prediction of the Aetna scores, uh, whether there are relationships between uh, human pathways uh, and uh, different human diseases and the drug targets with uh, model organisms. So what we, uh, we did here is that we take the top 1% of Aetna score between human and mouse and we cluster the data and identify, identify the functional modules and do the enrichment on biological processes, uh, diseases, and drug target. So you can see we find lots of interesting cluster here. Uh, due to the uh, time reason, I will only highlight one, uh, which clusters uh, the mental health uh, with some uh, neural de development uh, pathways and also with a drug that target for uh, uh, anxiety, uh, target for anxiety. So uh, this and also other clusters shows that uh, our prediction uh, contains information about biological processes and their relation to diseases, which give us uh, give Aetna the opportunity to be used to select uh, the better model for studying better model organism for studying diseases. To sum this up, uh, I introduced uh, our method Aetna, uh, which use an autoencoder to generate uh, uh, individual network embeddings. Then we use a method inspired from natural language processing area to cross aligning uh, to embeddings. The joint embedding contain both within and cross species similarities. Uh, and it can be used as input to other machine learning algorithms to uh, infer high, more complex gene relationships. And also uh, we can identify connection between the uh, function and diseases uh, and drug targets relationships uh, in our prediction. And some future steps. Uh, the first is uh, besides analysis in the similarity in our uh, prediction, we also want to see uh, what are the dissimilarities uh, in our prediction. And maybe it also has some biological meaning on that. And also since uh, most of the PPI networks are very sparse and uh, are incomplete, we are trying to use some uh, impu uh, imputation algorithm to complete our input. Hopefully it can give a better result. And third, we are trying to expand our method to incorporate weighted networks, uh, especially the quick fashion network since uh, they have like more network and also cell specific, tissue specific network uh, that are very biological interesting. And finally, since our um, like alignment is bidirectional, uh, it gives us the potential to aligning more than a pair of species, but uh, more uh, species together in a joint uh, embedding space. And finally, I want to uh, thank you to my advisor, Dr. Vicky Yeo, and also other contributors to this project and also uh, all the team members in our lab. And you can find uh, our preprint uh, in, on our bio archive. Um, and I'm glad to take any questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you. We have time for one question. Uh, yes. Is there a way to like sort of get the upper bound of the possible evaluation performance? Because I imagine like it's being split between sometimes they use some coding, sometimes like they don't really annotate the uh, the function of the gene. So is there a way to sort of say what the all possible performance of this kind of thing is on that evaluation? I don't uh to my understanding, I don't think it's possible because, like, I also think the since the uh, uh, the Go database is also like updated frequently, so we are getting more and more knowledge. So I don't think that's possible. Yeah. 